Well, as you can see for the uh, interface card for the front panel, we've got a fair amount of stuff to get soldered up here. Connectors and uh, transistors and diodes and lots of fun stuff. So I guess we'll just dive in here and work our way through this. So as I always do, I'm going to work from the lowest profile component as best I can up to the highest profile. The sockets are just laying in here at the moment just to make sure I've got the right number of everything. Gently set the, slide those aside. Don't want to bend the pins up too bad. And I've got the uh, bomb over here to my left. Let me find the resistors. Oh, it's calling for some 1Ks. I didn't grab any 1K. Let me go grab some 1K on resistors. nearly out of 1k ohm. Really common value. So we're looking for three 1k ohm resistors. There's two. That's a 10k. It's in the wrong place. And there's a third one that looks the same. Actually, I've got plenty of loose ones in here. I'll just pull out loose ones. That's, this little bin's gotten mixed up, 10K and 1K together. Come out, there's one, two, and three. So there were three 1K ohm resistors, R3, R4, R5, R1, when I say R3, R4, and R5. Kind of straighten the pins out on the ones that were previously bent. Find the uh, proper jig here for lead forming. I'm guessing point fours are going to be good again, and it is. So I will form the leads on these as best I can. You know, preforming the leads isn't a required step. I just eyeballed and bent leads for years. Uh, so R3 is over here. Then R4. Again, I'm just my normal practice of getting the tolerance bands all the same orientation, in this case up. And R5. R5 is in the middle here. didn't look quite right, but it is. And we can go ahead and solder here. in that same boat I was before where I don't have any 4.3 K ohm resistors but I have 4.7s 
And looking at the schematic, these are essentially current limiting for the base of three transistors. It looked like they kind of produce essentially inverters with some current drive capability to them, is my guess. The little larger resistance value may affect the slew rate on those and may actually be a problem. This might be the reason why he used 4.3Ks. I'm going to try it with 4.7s. I guess if I run into issues, you know, I can always order some 4.3Ks and swap them out. I don't think I will, but you know, 4.3K is just an oddball value to me. It's not kind of a standard resistor, at least in the, the color coding scheme that I use. I know there's different standards and it might be uh, a standard value in a different one of the standard sets. So R1 is down here. And R2 is up here. Then R4 and R6. Okay, R4, where are you? Now I see R6. I'll go ahead and put it in and we will scan here for R4. Interesting, where the heck is R4? Two there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Not up by the power supply, there's the diode there. Uh, that's Ah, I see what I did. I read the I read the one case is R three, four, and five. Actually, it is R three and R five. So that part needs to be substituted out. So uh, such is life. It happens. Let me flex the leads out slightly on these so they don't fall out when I flip the board over. We'll solder those three up and then remove the one I got in accidentally. Continues to be gray and overcast here in the Seattle area. For uh, getting close to mid-August, it's a little unusual to be this gray and overcast, this much rain. I haven't had to water at all this year, which is unusual by this time. Okay, the one I got wrong is our four is right there. So let's go ahead and remove him. Diode. Let me find the little box of the bag of the shot key diodes. Logic, 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 logic. Okay, that's nice and confusing. 
There it is. So there is, check those resistors off. There is D1, a 5817. I have a little bag of them here. As instructions say, you can bypass this if you're never going to do in-circuit programming of, of the PIC mic processor that implements the state machine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and configure it so I can do that in-circuit programming, just because why not? Uh, either way, not a big deal. That looks like it is going to be 0.4 spacing again. And of course, I got to get the white band on the diode aligned with the band marking in the silk screen. The uh, size of that lead, it took a little bit of heat. Pad isn't real big on this side. To transfer the heat through, if that's okay. Actually, shorten that lead up a bit. I don't like that I what I did to that solder joint. Once I cut through the center of the actual live solder joint, as I did this one, and I just like to touch them up. So that's got the diode in place. Sounds like the police are up to something outside. Uh, I think honestly at this point we move on to sockets. Pretty unexciting. Need a 14. I'm paying extra attention this time to the uh, notch orientation on these after that last time getting sockets in upside down. Got into a hurry. tape sticks to the uh, work surface. My normal thing again about getting sockets and out towards the four corners of the board as best I can so the board will actually just kind of sit level for soldering. And you know the procedure, if you've been watching my videos, I'll solder two outer pins, push them up flush with my finger while reheating and then and finish soldering them. So uh, we'll jump in and do that next. to touch uh, oh, that tip is crusty I managed to touch another pad and flow solder into it it's for the despiking cap I cleaned it out I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the soldering of this. I will jump in here. I'll capture it and we'll have it in high speed in a second. So anyhow, 
I'll see you on the other side of getting the socket soldered in. go with the spiking caps. So C1 is the 10 alum. I guess we'll do him first. So this is a 10 microfarad new old stock tantalum. On tantalums the white mark on the body is to the positive lead. Uh, often you know on like electrolytics the, the, the white stripe will be to the negative lead so that is in there reasonably well. You could most likely substitute an electrolytic here, and easily get away with it. Uh, it's really just for power supply smoothing. And C2 to C17 are all 0.1 microfarad. ceramic discs. I think I grabbed enough here. stretcher. I need three transistors which happen to be well packaged here in this. I most likely ordered ten just to be extras to go into my stock. Oh this is actually uh, sealed again. Wow, that is very well packaged, almost to a silly level. I need these to go back in the bag or I won't know what numbers they are without having to look at them. bag if I can get the box back in. There are three of these guys. There is a silk screen indication for orientation. cigar. Oh, I don't know what she's barking at down there.
And for transistors like this, I will solder the middle lead first. Then I will go back and visually look just to make sure it's square and I'm satisfied with the height still. And then finish soldering it up. Okay. I just prefer, you know, a neat, tidy build if I can do it. Can't always get things perfect. You never get things imperfect, but you can get close enough that you know it looks good. It doesn't look like a machine. I soldered it out. We are quickly getting through all of the components. So we've got those capacitors in. We've got the three transistors in. Everything has an IC socket. I think we move on now to... I'll hit this connector here next. Interesting that the part numbers for the two 50-pin uh, connectors were different. They're both right angle, so this calls for a. Where's the part number in here? Uh, 5302 AR53. Yep, that matches his bomb. Looks like in this case it goes on the front of the board. Tack a couple corners, make sure it's flush, and then walk through it. I think part of the part number difference has got to do with where the uh, alignment slot is for the ribbon cable header. Now, this is a pretty quick, straightforward build. the edge connector. Move on to the uh, voltage regulator. I know there was a heat sink floating around here. And a little hardware kit. 
I don't need to use the uh, mica spacer out of this, but I am going to use the little nut bolt and washer. So the first thing here is to kind of determine where to bend the, the leads, and it looks like it's pretty typical. They're going to be bent about where the shoulder gets wider on the leads. So get a pair of needle nose on there. Give those a nice 90 degree bend. Screw hole lines up well. I didn't order the heat sink that he called out. I've just got a bunch of random heat sinks here. Uh, both pools and some new old stock stuff. Don't like the screw height there. Really don't like the length of the screw. That's too long. So I'm going to fish for something shorter here. That's probably too short. there and see what we get lengthwise. Well if I can find the hole on the PCB it seems a little short but maybe not. Now I am of course making an assumption here that the uh, threads are the same might be a really poor assumption. Wow, my big old fingers are having a really hard time getting in there with any kind of action to hold that nut. Yeah, it got lucky then. Nut and the thread were the same size. screw isn't sticking out beyond the edges of the heat sink. So it lessens the ability to short against something next to it. Now this will take a bit of heat to solder because I've got the heat sink and everything else back there. But it can be done. The two outside pins really shouldn't be a problem. The middle pin maybe because it runs back. No, it's taking solder just fine. The solder flowed through to the front side of the board, so that actually soldered up really easily and well. Trim these leads off. Oh, got some screws that I left loose. getting really close to being done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and solder in the programming header. Maybe. The tape here. Just in case I ever need to reprogram the pick that implements the state machine. Uh, this is optional because I put the diode in, which is part of the, the programming circuit. I might as well complete everything. Certainly not straight. That's better. That's better. I've got several pick programmers. If I ever get to the point of needing to change the state machine or he releases a new version, this is an alternative way to be able to program it. Of course, I could just pop the pick out and do it on my standalone programmers and apparently there's a way in software to I think do it directly from the machine if what I read is correct. So really I think we're down to one last component and that is these. And 
that is that guy right there. Pretty quick build. No, I didn't. Let me get my fingers in here. Let's see if I can push it in flush. That's better. I think that finishes the build, you know, once this guy soldered in. So I am not going to put the logic chips in yet. I will apply power to the board and make sure the 5 volt regulator is working. And I have 5 volts where I expect it to be. It is a new 7805, but it's a good precaution. Uh, I've still got to hook up a power supply to the back plane, those kind of things. Uh, I haven't got there yet. And touch up the joint we started with. That one could use a little more solder. I think we're done. I think that is the interface board assembled. Uh, everything looks good from this side. I got all the notches and the sockets correct for a change. Quick look across the back. I don't see any obviously missing solder joints. There's a lot of vias on the board. I wonder what dig one is there with the two pins. I don't know. Don't see any missing solder joints. Yes, I do. This is why you inspect, and it's actually power pin on the TTL device. Which would have made trying to get this running interesting. Again, this is why you inspect and actually I am going to attempt to use some magnification. I bought this just because my eyes are not that actually doesn't help. I was afraid of that. I didn't have so much glare on the board from the overhead lights it might. But anyhow, I think with that we're gonna wrap this piece of the build up. There is the front panel interface card that goes into the S100 bus. Uh, on the original MSI you use jumper wires from the front panel down to the actual uh, back plane itself. This is a lot cleaner, should be a lot more reliable. 50 conductor ribbon cable goes between the two boards. Very happy with the build. The front panel came together nice in the previous video. This has come together nice, so uh, I'll clean up here and try to figure out what we're going to do next.